At a gathering last week of upstate ELCA rostered leaders, one of my colleagues said this, I'm tired of thinking outside the box. I'm ready to get back in my box where life was easy, comfortable, and predictable. I resonate with her words. I'd love to crawl back into my box and escape the innovative effort that each day requires. I would like to lean into the skills I've been developing for decades instead of the pressure to master new ones every day. I've endured challenging times in ministry, but ministry in a global pandemic is harder, more complicated on so many levels. First, I value structure, order, planning. Right now, it's almost impossible to make definitive plans. Second, I like to anticipate things, look forward with energy and excitement to big church events, big life events. And right now, looking too far into the future seems pointless. And third, I love Sunday morning worship in this place with all of you. It's the highlight of the week. Sunday morning spent gathered together in this place feeds my soul, gives me energy, fills my heart with joy. Right now, this kind of experience is simply not yet possible. I am learning in these strange days that there must be a balance between comfort and courage. I need the comfort of the old familiar things that bring joy, fulfillment, and meaning. I need courage to explore new things, innovative ideas, out-of-the-box thoughts that will propel this congregation into the future that God desires for us. It's a balance. Every day requires comfort and courage. With the comfort of my morning coffee and oatmeal, time spent in meditation, and some moments to be grounded in God's presence. I can be courageous. I can learn new things. I can tackle challenging problems. I can do hard things. All of this change, chaos, reshuffling, reordering, and reprioritizing is allowing us to participate with God in the renewal, reordering, and recreating of the world and the church. Regardless of how challenging life and ministry are right now, a new story is waiting to take hold, something we have not yet seen or felt or heard or experienced. God is calling us to work with God and each other to champion this new story, a story we do not know, but a story written by the divine author who we trust completely. In the church, this is a time of reformation, a time to figure out what has value and meaning and what does not, a time to discern the future God is calling us to embrace time to make brave and bold decisions that will better equip us to fulfill God's mission. It's going to look different. We will lose some things. We will gain some things. But one thing I know, the church will rise. Just as Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday morning, the church will rise rise to meet the demands of a changing world, rise to dismantle injustice, rise to work for peace, rise to love and care for all of God's people, rise to find new ways to connect, comfort, and bless. In these days of global pandemic, God is doing a new thing. From the ashes of fear and worry, we will rise. From the ashes of loss, sickness, and death, we will rise. 
from the ashes of chaos and disaster, we will rise. From the ashes of isolation and loneliness, we will rise. And we will be stronger, more faithful, more connected, more compassionate, more willing and able to trust God, to trust the divine power who holds our future in kind, loving hands. Let's loosen our grip on the past, relax our hold on all that has been, and let's reach forward with wide open hands into a future that has been lovingly prepared for us. Let's take a deep breath, be soothed and comforted, and then step forward in faith and with courage, trusting that God has a new and joyous and beautiful future in store for us.